was really excited about this week. We were coming down here to hunt the Audad, which is also known as the Barbary Sheep. And these animals definitely do not get the amount of credit they deserve. They're hard to see, and the country that they live in down here is just amazing. You got a bunch. 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 So when we spotted some of these audits, they have been 12, 1,300 yards away. So that's really a long distance. Looks like it's a, that one's a ewe, and she's got a lamb there by her. Optics are a key factor when hunting audads, and they blend in with the terrain. There's a lot of yucca plants. They look like an animal from a distance. So you're going to have to have something good to be able to see. I don't think, that, no, that's not what we're looking for, but. They're on the move now, huh? Well, maybe we better move them. Tell you what, Cade and Rusty Hall, their outfitting business is called Off the Grid Outdoors. And man, that name is true to what they are because we are literally off the grid. We are in the middle of nowhere. I think we're about 11 miles from the Mexican border out here in Southwest Texas in just some of the most rugged, unforgiving country you'll ever see. Where we're hunting here is Central Texas down near the Mexican border. We hunt a lot of big ranches along the Rio Grande. They're rough, broken. You know, it's got the kind of country that all dads like to live in. This week was a special treat for me because I was going to be able to hunt with Albert Wanamaker, who is our CEO, and Dustin Woods, is our director of sales. And I've known these guys for several years, worked for them and with them. And you know, we get a lot of time in the office and trade shows, but we don't get a lot of time out in the field. And I was really looking forward to kind of stepping outside of the office, getting off the grid for a couple of days, and, and really getting out in the field with them to get the chance to hunt. The average distance that we'll see an Audad at, I would say we're looking at Audads between 800 and 1,000 yards. If you get much closer than that, your skyline or something, they've got you pegged and they leave. They leave the country real fast. I got them in the scope. They're about halfway down that bowl. The two on the left are small, but the one that's got his head in the bush, I need to get a good look at. The one's slightly bigger. I just don't know how much. Optics is everything for this hunt. If you don't have a good pair of optics, you'd be walking around blind. Those are all young bachelor males. Young male. Good spot, though, dude. Thank you. I didn't know very much uh, what to expect of this hunt, so I obviously I read a bit about the audit and its habitat here in Texas, New Mexico. Nodad is basically an exotic animal that they imported from Africa. They call them the Barbary sheep because they came out of that Barbary coast area. The Barbary sheep, or Audad, has thrived in North America with heavy curling horns to match their hefty frames. These wary desert dwellers reach world-class size when their horns measure 30 inches from base to tip. To get a trophy quality Audad, they have to be 10 to 14 years old, 28 inches or better. You know, and they'll be uh, 350 pounds on some of these big mature males. They're a big animal. And it's really difficult to outsmart these animals in their own turf. They are really masters in their environment. And if you enjoy spot and stock hunting, this is one of the best experiences you can have. You're gonna see a lot of game. They're gonna challenge you to find them. And then they're really gonna challenge you to get up and, and get a shot opportunity. So they are a really fun animal to hunt. 184 yards. Not quite what we're looking for, but he's really, really close. And that's about as close as you can get to these animals. We had started out early that morning and did a lot of glassing. And we saw a lot of sheep right away, but just not the ones we were looking for. And it got to be about 11, 30, 12 o'clock that day. And I kind of looked at Rusty and said, let's kind of get over this last hill and take a good look at this bull. And if we don't see anything, we're going to head back to camp. This looks like a good spot. Sit in glass for a little bit. Yeah. Sure enough, it was our last stop, and I hadn't sat down for more than a minute and just happened to pick these two really good audad. They were just laying under a bush at about 900 yards. And... I got two underneath the tree. Yep. Yep. That one's a pretty good one, it looks like. Let me take a look through the skull real quick, and I'll tell you what they look like. We spotted them right at the distance of about 900 yards. He is a good ram. It looks like he's a shooter to me. 
He's got a lot of mass. The other one's definitely smaller. I mean, you think he's worth going after? I do. I think he's a good one. We ought to go do it. Albert? Um, yep. What do you think? Let's go for him. We're going to have to definitely keep out of sight. These things have incredible eyes. If we skyline or they see us going across the top, they'll just take off and we won't see them again. I mean, they're, they really have it's good eyes. It's bedded down at this time of day. It really dawned on me that we are going to have a very challenging hunt ahead of us. We headed out on this really cool finger that had a huge bowl underneath us. And, you know, as we walked up to this finger, we kind of got separated. And, you know, sure enough, there were a bunch of sheep down on the bowl. But it seemed like where Dustin and Cade went off, they had gotten on this really good group of four. Dustin. Shoot, there's some right there. Come on. Okay. All of a sudden, these sheep start bouncing away. And, and we could tell that we had jumped them. Right here, right here, right here, so. OK, they're 200 right now. 200. How far? 225. And then boom, right out of the back of him, uh, jumps up a, a good size ram. I got him in the scope, but he's moving. OK, he's at three. Oh. He's moving quick. Okay. I don't have a shot. Don't do it, no, because he's right, going right around the edge now. Shoot, kid, what do you think, man? He, where he's going is he's going to go actually up and over, and he's going to go into that draw. And I know where that draw is. If you want it, we can get up and go do it. I'd sure like to see that ram again. OK, let's do this. A typical stock will involve looking for a path where you can get out of the odd ads view, but they're constantly on the alert. And so you have to sneak around, staying out of sight. Even if we have been very close, we needed to use every single and little bit of cover we could find out there so we could stay out of their sight. When you go after these animals, climbing is definitely, let's say, something you need to be accustomed to. You know, it really becomes a huge mental challenge. The weather's hot, everything's pricking you, so you really have to keep focus and you really stay in the hunt. OK, guys, all we've got to do, I think we're about 200 yards away from where we can make a shot. All we've got to do is slip up here, and then we'll just ease up over that edge right there, and he should be right there underneath that bluff. So as we try to close the distance, those last couple hundred yards, it's, it's one of those things you, you hope they're still sitting in the same spot that they were two hours ago, but you haven't seen them in 45 minutes. Rusty, Rusty, you see him? He's just kind of getting out of that bush up top. Yeah. The other one's over to the right. He's 375. That's well within range of us. And we get up another 50 or 60 yards on that. Yeah, that'd be good. I'll put my pack down. Comfortable at that distance. Yeah. Okay. Cade, our guide, he figured he knew where they were headed. So we hopped in the mule and drove as fast as we could way around at least two or three miles to get on the back side of the bowl to where we thought they were going to be going. Boy, he is clear on the other side of that big canyon. So this road will get us quite a ways over around the other side. Yeah. And we're going to hike up on the left side of that. And they should be right there. Sounds good. This is the we spot, huh? Right here. So we get up over this right here. Yep, this is it's going to be hard, but it really is the only option we got with the lighting the time we got left, because we only have an, about 45 minutes till it gets dark. That sun drops real quick, so let's do it. Let's get up the hill. So eventually, we have been able to make our way up to a distance of about 275 yards. Uh, there was one other order about 50, 60 yards away. And you know, one order is really a challenge already getting close to, but two orders just multiply the challenge right there. OK, go ahead, Albert. Just plug right up here. So it was more important now for me to, to find a, a solid rest where I could put my rifle on and get also a, a solid shooting position. He's right there by that green bush. Mm -hmm. Got it on the left side. He's there, he's right in that bush, and he's only about 250 yards away. So now the adrenaline starts to pump. We found the one we were looking for, and he has no idea we're there. 275. 275? Yeah. Just wait for him to clear that bush. Mm -hmm. As soon as he comes out of that bush and gives you the broadside, go ahead. 
and now it became a waiting game, just waiting for this odd dad that we have been chasing for six hours. And I guess I shouldn't say chasing. We spotted him six hours ago. We made the trek, and we did everything we could to stay out of sight. And now it's all coming together, and all we have to do is wait for him to step out of this bush to get a good shot. He eventually started coming out. OK, mm -hmm. just take your time. John, you he was standing there so beautifully. Nice shot. Hit him perfect. <laughs> He's done. <laughs> nice shot. Good job, buddy. Thank you. You did it. Thank you. Yeah. Nice shot. Thank oh, you. Man. And it was loud too, right? It was. <laughs> yeah. You said we go take a look at That's it. That's good. Okay, yeah. buddy. Let's do it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. When that animal went down, and I saw the look on Albert's face, and it's one of those things when you're on a hunt, and the mental and the physical challenges all come together and you harvest the animal that you've really been hoping for the last several hours and you put so much time and effort and energy into it, it, it really just is an unbelievably rewarding experience. An animal like this, probably eight or nine years old? Yeah, I think that, uh, that they say they get to be 28 to 30 inches long, they're almost anywhere from 10 to 12. So. You, you got me in a little trouble today, though. I, I told Albert it was going to be a pretty easy hunt. That was one of the most <laughs> difficult days that I've had in a long time. <laughs> but it was difficult. <laughs> cool. Albert, congratulations. Thank you so much. Badman Tile? Badman Sank, yeah. <laughs> Good job, Albert. Uh, okay. Thanks so much, Rusty. Great guiding. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Hike straight up this brutal mountainside and, and got up all the way to the very top. Hold on a second here. I'm gonna go glass right over. Got up there, spotted him. He was on a rim with uh, with another young ram and... Okay, what are you gonna use for a bat? They're right there. I'm gonna use this bat. They're right there in the shade. Let's go hike over here. We'll get where we can lay down. But we gotta stay really low because they're up high. So let's go in. So we crept up over the very top stayed out of their sight, kept our profiles low, and, and crawled in the last several feet. Let's set up right there on this rock. We crawled about, I would say, about 30 yards. OK, there's one in the back. Yeah, that smaller ram's trying to get up the top. Yeah. They may move up. OK, he's moving. He's right behind the yucca plant right now. OK, just set up right now. Get ready. Hang on OK, let me yardage where, rest. where he's going to come out. There was a top ram, the little one. He ended up seeing us, and so he spooked up, came over the top. And once he came over the top, the other one followed, and he set himself up for a perfect shot. OK, 369, that's where he's at exactly. Yeah, he's broadside. Ready? Got him. Yep. He's down. He's down, dude. He's down. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> that's out at hunting right there for you, buddy. Good job, That's man. awesome. Good job. Oh my gosh. Oh man, it's getting dark right now. Um, we might be coming out back here in the morning. It is getting late. It was a fun hunt. I've never had such an exciting, uh, exciting hunt. It was, everything came together. He was right where we thought he'd be and, and he gave us a shot. Dustin's mind is reeling as the hunters convene for a celebratory feast of Audad meat from Albert's Trophy. But morning can't come soon enough for Dustin as he waits for the chance to put his hands on the heavy horns of his ram. Well, we shot the sheep last night. It got pretty dark and uh, decided to bail off because we're just getting so late. But you can see how dangerous it is. It's, oh, yeah. It's pretty treacherous walking during the day, never mind in the dark at night. Well, we got our work cut out for us. Okay. So we headed out that morning for the recovery, and you could see the look in Dustin's eye. He was excited. He wanted to get his hands on these horns, spot. but we had a long way to walk. Where they ended up getting on the sheep was a ways up. And we took a different route, which was a little bit of an easier route. Wasn't quite so treacherous, but still took us a long time to get there. There he is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> look at that. We got up to that ram, and I'll tell you that the feeling of excitement and energy was all there. It was, it was awesome to see him. Uh, just a big, beautiful ram, very mature. They're just strong, they're tough, they're, they're quick, and their eyesight's unbelievable. They're really a special animal. You can tell why they call them a true trophy, because Absolutely. they're not easy. Everybody thinks about killing one, and then they see what they live in, and then they go, oh, OK. <laughs> it was just great to be part of the whole group, and 
seeing the relief on Dustin's face and that sense of accomplishment. And, but at the end of the day, I think it's all about the camaraderie. It's the togetherness. It's kind of going through the journey of a hunt together. And How's the jump in that sound right now, huh? It was such a great experience oh, being out here okay. in nature with friends, with yeah. colleagues, and, uh, and basically being successful in getting one of these beautiful animals. I can't get over how blue it is. Isn't that beautiful? I tell you what, this hunt from start to finish was just top notch. And then to see these beautiful Audad, these animals that are, are thriving in this environment, uh, it's really just been an, an overall an awesome experience.